Cardiology is a wonderful field. It's uh, what we call the bleeding edge of medicine. Um, it's not only the single leading cause of mortality and morbidity, death and dying across the world, but it is the discipline in which innovation first strikes. Computational modeling is entering every aspect of medicine, biology, science, and technology. It does at least three very important things. It helps us design the next new thing. It helps us understand how the body works, and it's going to be a tool that clinicians use to decide what the optimal therapy is for each specific patient. So the way we use computational modeling and simulation is when you go in for a CT scan or an MRI, we're able to take those images and create three-dimensional models of them. We can then take those models and put them into computers, and since we understand the equations of flow and mechanics, we can start to produce images like the one you see here of a wall shear stress on a vessel. And this vessel particularly is, uh, is blocked, so it's somebody who maybe had a heart attack, and now we want to investigate why they had that heart attack. We have an embarrassment of riches. We have more drugs, we have more devices, we have more interventions than we would ever use for one specific patient. But we don't necessarily know which is the right one for each individual person. Computational modeling will become a very important part of the personalization of medicine. We can reconstruct a person's anatomy. We can even predict their biologic response. And the day will come when we can use computational biology and computational modeling to allow us to choose a drug, a device, an intervention for a specific person. So we no longer have to rely on experience or intuition or just luck in terms of choosing what would be best for our specific patient. I'm Steve Levine, Hartford Deso System Simulia, and I'm the project director for the Living Heart Project. The Living Heart Project is really an effort to bring together the best science that's out there for modeling the cardiovascular system using computational tools. The biggest challenge I think cardiologists have is understanding the individual patient. The technology we have today often provides fingerprints or uh, an indication of what the problem is, but not a direct analysis of what the problem is. It's very difficult, expensive, and sometimes very invasive to actually see what's going on. What we think we can do is we can take a simulation of that exact heart uh, by taking our understanding of the physics of the heart and providing that in full 3D to that cardiologist so he can actually get a true representation of what's happening. So we used our 3D technology to create uh, immersive 3D environments. And we've built two scenarios, one which is a virtual operating room, which allows you to see how a surgeon could be looking at a patient on a table. You can investigate uh, surgical procedures in real time. The second scenario is really a deep dive investigation into the heart itself. And that's where the interesting part comes. When they're in that heart, it's beating and the sounds are going. Everyone has the same reaction where it takes them to a place where they said, wow, this is really powerful. I can really feel how this can make a difference. We hope that this project sort of uh, takes the top off the box for research. In a digital world, we don't have to worry about a specific patient. We don't have to worry about legal issues. We can uh, take those constraints off of our research and allow whatever innovations the researchers have to be tried digitally and not worry about an incorrect outcome. We focused specifically on modeling the heart because cardiovascular disease is the number one killer uh, of people worldwide. So we stuck to a particular community, but we know that, that each of the body's organs has its own community. We expect organ by organ, each of these communities will step up and say, well, if the heart team can do it, then maybe we, the brain team, can do it, and people who focus on the liver can do it. And slowly but surely, the entire body will be modeled. Computational modeling will be an essential part of everything we do as clinicians and scientists. It will be embedded in hospitals and in laboratories. We've advanced from a static x-ray to three-dimensional reconstructions. 
Now imagine if we could intervene virtually and show the physician and the patient what would happen if we do this operation, this intervention, this insertion and implantation. This is all going to be part of the medicine of the future, and the future is not so far away. It's in our lifetime.